Good Friday to you, saints. It's almost time for Shabbat Shalom. Praise the Lord, but not quite yet. This word, they have to go through Jesus to get to you. And this isn't just a random word of encouragement. This is actually literal. And we see in John chapter 10, where Jesus is saying, I am the door. And the Holy Spirit continues to talk about how Jesus is the door and that we actually come through him. That's a word for another time. But this is kind of just like, an offshoot of that word. So back in the day, the shepherd of the sheep would actually at night put the sheep in the sheep pen and then literally lie across the entranceway to the sheep pen so that if any animals came or somebody came to rob those sheep, they had to go through the actual shepherd first. You know, they'd have to climb over him, which would wake him up. You know, so literally the shepherd actually acted as the door. This is what Jesus was talking about in this scripture uh, in John 10, which we're about to read. He literally, the shepherd literally acts as the door, just like Jesus today. Um, this, the Lord is talking about oneness additionally oneness you know jesus and the father are one and by your faith in the lord jesus you two are reconciled to god the god of all things you know when adam and eve were banished were i mean i don't think there's a strong enough word from the garden for their disobedience you know uh recently was put on my heart that they it wasn't like a a, a slow uh sir ma'am you have to leave you know how satan fell from uh he fell like lightning right he fell like lightning the bible says with such force were adam and eve also banished from the garden i mean just total supernatural for that disobedience and that's the power of the blood i mean one of the many powers of the blood of christ jesus what the lord did he reconciled you back to god by taking on what caused god to you know Again, the word isn't strong enough, but to banish Adam and Eve from the garden whom he loved and created to enjoy. And it wasn't, he, he didn't want to do that, but God is no respecter of persons. So by the blood of Jesus, you're reconciled back to the Lord. Uh, and, and, and that's incredible. And he doesn't want us looking at ourselves as outsiders okay looking in um you know at what could be looking in at others in this walk he doesn't want you as an outsider in any respect or any regard um he doesn't want you seeing yourself as separate or requiring anything external which is difficult and we're working on it and he you know he's so patient with patient with us to know the strongholds of our mind but specifically he doesn't want you looking at yourself as an outsider or feeling separate you know because that's going to come to the believers but that's why we have the body we are not an island unto ourselves we really need one another especially as the tables begin to turn against uh, the Christians um, in places where where you and I live and he's also really illustrating how we must come through Jesus, who is the door to do so. So again, I'm going to get into that word, um, a longer piece that I want to write soon. But I just wanted to let you know, you know, whatever type of enemies or whatever type of, you know, foe, who would ever want to strike at you, you know, who would ever want to come for you spiritual satan is a is a robber he's a thief you know he's a liar um physical enemies they have to go through the lord to get to you he is still the door and by your faith people have to go through that door so the faithless they can't go through that door to get to you you know another illustration this is of weapons may form but they will not prosper and and for many you know you've you've been hurt by others and betrayed in, in, in ridiculous and terrible ways and yet they still haven't separated you from the lord they haven't pulled you through that doorway back to your old life and back to the world for they cannot for the lord is the door that you have come through by faith and nothing can separate you from him and no one can take away your identity give as given by the lord People have to go through him to get to you and best believe that by the time they go through you, uh, by the time they go through the Lord, they don't want to, you know, come for you. Now they're family, which is ultimately which we hope for all. So in closing, I would like to read from John 10, 
Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. And this is so neat um, that, that the shepherd, he calls the sheep out uh, by name and that they know his voice. That's such, it's an illustration of intimacy, you know, and that's between sheep and a shepherd, of course, how much more, which is what he's talking about between we, between us and him. So verse seven, then Jesus said to them again, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. I am, what a crazy statement, you know what I mean? I am the door of the sheep. And that's what he's talking about. Um, all who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. He says it again. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find passion. We're talking about this in a word the other day that you don't stand in the doorway. You know, you don't stand on the side of the door. Well, I, I'm Jesus is the door and I'm at the door. You have to go through the door. He says, uh, that you go in and out and you find pastures. So there's a manifestation here. You go through the door, you come out the other side, right? Being reborn in Christ and there's a manifestation. It says you find pasture, that's safety, that's a dwelling place and that is who the Lord is for you. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may find life and that they may have it ever more abundantly and that's all on the other side of the door. Praise the Lord. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his, his life for the sheep, right? Because he lays right at the doorway there. So if he's, if some wolf comes trying to kill a sheep, you best to believe that that wolf's going to have to try to crawl over the shepherd. The shepherd's going to wake up and he's going to fight that wolf for his sheep. Absolutely. But a hireling who is not the shepherd, one who does not own his own sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling and he does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. He says it again. And I know my sheep and am known by my own. He says, I am known by my own. Wow. As the father knows me, even so, I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. And that's absolutely where we are headed, saints, toward being one flock and one shepherd. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the door. Um, John 14 and 6 in closing, Jesus said to him, I am the truth and the way and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me because Jesus is the door. Praise the Lord.